Hi, I'm David Gilbert, Technology Editor with the International Business Times UK, and I'm here today to take a look at the latest iPhone from Apple, which is the iPhone 5S. It's not a major upgrade on the iPhone 5, which we saw last year. Indeed, it's exactly the same shape, size, dimensions as the iPhone 5, but there are a couple of significant updates. I guess the first one is the fingerprint reader, which everyone was talking about at the launch, and it's located right on the home button here, and it allows you to unlock the phone using your finger, and it also allows you to confirm app purchases or purchases from iTunes just by using your finger, so you don't have to put in your uh, code. And it works really well, you can have up to five different fingers um, on each um, on each sensor so you can use different fingers, you can have different members of your family allowed to use it. I haven't had any problems when it hasn't recognised my fingerprint so it's a, it's a good start but it, it will only really take off when, when Apple allow third party app developers to integrate it into their um, apps. The next major update comes on the back here, you'll see that the um, Apple has introduced a new uh, dual LED flash which uh, is its way of trying to help it in low light situations, something that the iPhone hasn't been great at up until now, and something which cameras on smartphones from the likes of HTC, um, Samsung, and most notably, I guess, Nokia, have really improved on in the past couple of years. And so this is Apple trying to catch up, and it, it does work pretty well. It's not quite as good as we'll say, or it's obviously not as good as the Lumia 1020, which is, has a 41 megapixel sensor, but it, it does work a lot better than the iPhone did previously. Apple has decided to keep the screen at the same size, it's four inches and it's still the retina display, and while it's still nice and bright and sharp and it looks really well, it's really beginning to feel a bit small now at four inches. This, typically from every other manufacturer having phones with five inch screens, the iPhone does feel decidedly small and it's surely just a matter of time before Apple decides to make a bigger screen is that's what people are getting used to uh, everywhere else. One of the other big changes that Apple has made is on the inside and you won't be able to see it it's with the 64-bit processor. Uh, it's the first smartphone with a 64-bit processor which is something we're used to on desktop machines but in a smartphone it just shows how powerful smartphones now are and they really are just small computers at this stage. The 64-bit processor uh, will help in terms of battery life but also in terms obviously of uh, performance and the interface on the iPhone 5s is excellent and obviously it's running iOS 7 which is Apple's latest version of its software and iOS 7 has been designed to run well on a 64-bit processor. Everything is very fast, very snappy, apps open instantly, multitasking is really good and it's that tight integration between hardware and software which continues to make the experience on an iPhone much better than it is on Android. Also on the inside you get uh, what's called the M7 Motion Coprocessor. Now it sounds a bit boring but it's actually very interesting. It's a chip which basically constantly monitors the orientation of the phone, its movement, and so it can be used in the likes of fitness apps, we'll say from Nike Plus, which is one of the most popular ones, or RunKeeper, and it allows the phone to become a fitness tracker, so you don't have to wear a separate band, you just can use the phone and it will, apps will be able to take advantage of this. Now at the moment, there, there aren't many apps out there which are taking advantage of it, but down the road we expect this to become a really, really important part of uh, what a smartphone does as wearable tech and fitness uh, apps become really popular. And it also allows the monitoring of it, but it doesn't drain the battery because of the way, because of the separate chip, chip that uses it, which is really important for fitness trackers because draining the battery is something which smartphone owners really don't want because battery life on smartphones, even still, is um, relatively poor. And on the iPhone 5S, you're just about going to eke out a day of typical use out of it. Um, so that's the iPhone 5S. It's not a major update from Apple, but there are some interesting new features on it. As I said, the fingerprint scanner probably being the, the main one. Uh, it's available for £550 SIM free, which is a slight increase in price. And it means that you're paying quite a lot of money for what is relatively a small phone these days. But for those who like Apple and who are tied into the ecosystem, this is definitely an excellent update to an already excellent smartphone. I'm David Gilbert, Technology Editor of the International Business Times UK. If you want to check out some more reviews, then just click here.